Pokemon! It's Pikachu! It's Clefairy! Let me just cross that off my to-do list here. There we go. What's up, everybody? My name is Face Disgrace, and this is the Beginner's Guide to Final Fantasy XIV. Rule one, pick what you want. So of course, first thing you're gonna do is create a character. And if you're like me, you Google a guide to figure out what class you wanna be and what race is best for that class. But don't do that this time. Why? Well, this is in America. Race doesn't unfairly determine your opportunities here. Pick the race you like. Picking a race solely for their stat numbers is a terrible idea. Every race can do any job anyway, so if you really want to be a hobbit tank, just do it. There's not a huge difference once you get into the game anyway, so if you pick for stats, you're stuck with a character you don't really like for the remainder of your playthrough. Even though you want it to be that big burly warrior race, you're stuck with the anime cat race for the three tiny stat point difference, and now you're left staring at the shameful reminder that there are people in this world who are a little too into animals for the next 600 hours. Yeah. No thanks. After you've created your character, the next thing you're going to be doing is picking what god you associate with, and trust me, this choice bears so little importance, it's clear the developers just thought it sounded cool and then slapped it in. They may have future plans for it that just haven't materialized yet, but the choice is so poorly incorporated they may as well have just had a TDA sign and a roulette wheel for the actual decision. God Association provides tiny little elemental stat boosts, so yeah, I mean, I guess there technically may be an optimal god for whatever class you're choosing, but we're talking such slight boosts that you will never notice. I'm serious, I just chose mine based on what name sounded cool and haven't regretted it at all. It's so unimportant, it's like being asked at the store if you want your 10 cents and change back as a dime or two nickels. It really doesn't matter. Actually, Scratch, that's kind of a bad example. We all know better than to pick Nickelback. All right, making progress. Rule two, party hard. See a player, invite to party. Five levels above you, invite to party. Anywhere near the same vicinity as you, invite to party. Invite everyone! Except that guy, he's, he's not gonna care. Actually, what the hell is he doing in a starting area? While you're out questing, you may as well take advantage of the amount of players in an MMO and party up. The party system isn't as refined as it should be. There's no sharing quests or XP boosts like other MMOs, which is kind of surprising considering we're a reboot in two DLCs in here, Square. But you know the old saying about having friends. Only make them if they'll do the dirty work for you while you take all the credit and rewards. Steve Jobs. Having a party to quest with is so much better than going alone, because even though you can't share quests, as long as a party member kills a creature, it still dings your counter for those standard kill X amount of these quests. And if you're the one helping a party member out with their quest, you're still getting sweet XP from all the monsters you and your party kill. Plus, you guys can take on those randomly generated fate event quests together, and you'll all reap the XP and gill rewards from it. And considering completing a fate event solo can take longer than The Walking Dead to actually advance the fucking plot, you'll be glad you had a party. Switch to party chat, be nice and take turns with whose quests you're doing, and remember to add each other as friends in-game. Why? Well, later on, it'll be easier to head into dungeons and guild tests when you can invite some of the random people you've met earlier to fill spots instead of waiting in queue for a fucking tank to finally join. And, you know, you might actually meet some cool people and make in-real-life friends as well. That happens, so, you know, never hurts to be nice to people. Alright, found a checklist from one of my earlier videos. Steal ideas from better creators, I mean, that's a given. Pretend that you're funny, I do that every single video. Help me, I'm being held against my will. Wait, what the fuck? When did you write this? Rule 3, story and guild quest first. This is probably hard to do if you're a completionist like me and have obsessive compulsive disorder and need to get everything done on the checklist, but leave those little side quests behind. I know, I know, that sweet old lady needs you to kill some squirrels in her attic or whatever, but bitch can wait. This is actually super helpful later on, but I'll need to explain the job system a little bit in my learning center first. <clears throat> Why, hello there, and welcome to the Learning Center. Today, we're going to make your mother proud and teach you how to get a job. Jobs are basically just upgraded classes, but they require that you hit level 30 in your starting class and level 15 in a job-specific secondary class in order to advance. For instance, if a conjurer wants to go on to be a white mage, he needs to get his conjurer class to 30, but he also needs to get the archer class to 15, because obviously healing requires a legolas level of bow hunting skills. That, that doesn't make any fucking sense at all. What do you mean the archer class needs to be 15? Do they expect the white mage to go bow hunting between fights or something? 
Anyway, the aspiring healer must get both classes to the required level. Only then can he go on to fulfilling his dream of having his teammates scream curses and insults at him for not healing them because the black mage decided to run ahead, grab aggro, and get himself killed like the fucking dumbass that all black mages are. If you want to do damage, pick someone who wears armor and can at least take a punch, you fucking piece of shit! This concludes the learning center for today. It's Pikachu! Anyway, when you start leveling another class, you start back out as a level 1 with level 1 gear. So taking on the now level 30 quests that fill your duty screen isn't an option. Leveling your starting class is easy enough just doing story and guild quests, but once those are finished, they're finished. You can't go redo an early level story quest like you can go redo an X. There ain't no drunk dial for story quests. But if you're leaving those early side quests that any class can do open, you can get your secondary class to 15 faster than I last in bed. And by that I mean about 5 <laughs> seconds. So tell the farmer who needs you to go pick up some rocks in his field because he's too busy to suck it for a little while because you got some world saving shit to do. Too busy. <laughs> like farming's a hard job or something. Now, what was that last thing on my to-do list? Nice. Following these rules should get you up and running on your new best reason to avoid social interactions. If you enjoyed this, feel free to share it with your friends and leave a like. Plus, you can also subscribe if you want to see more beginner's guides like the ones I did for Doom and Prey. They're like three minutes, so go check them out. My name is Face Disgrace, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.